Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how to make a basic report using the Infragistix Net Advantage reporting product. So I have the Net Advantage reporting product installed on my machine and I wanted to explain to everybody that you can basically use any platform within Visual Studio to create these reports. It's basically a WYSIWYG designer surface that you get within Visual Studio that you can drag and drop objects, data sources, configure the report layout and so forth within a WYSIWYG designer in Visual Studio. There's several suggestions I can give off the top of my head. You could pretty much create a dummy or throwaway project just to create the reports and then what you can do is take the report files that you generate within your project and then just copy them over um, to your network share or somewhere in the file system however you like, however you feel is most appropriate for your enterprise deployment. So in this particular example, I'm going to just use a Windows Forms application to create my projects. You can also create a class library um, and embed the reports as actual resources. That's another way you can do this. But um, in my other video called Reusing Reports, which you, which you should check out, shows how to just leave the reports as they are as the report files, which is basically an XML file that can be referenced throughout many different applications that have an Infragistics report viewer, whether it's Silverlight, WPF, Windows Forms, ASP.NET, um, so various platforms can view these reports. Alright, so let's get started. Let's just create a dummy throwaway project for this. And we'll save it here. And I had an existing project open, so it's just going to close all that out. So here's my reporting playground project. I have a form in here. And one thing I wanted to show you while I'm on Windows Forms here, let's collapse the toolbar, the, the toolboxes here, and let's take a look for let's look for the net advantage reporting for Windows Forms. So you basically get one of these report viewers for the various different platforms. So you have one for um, WPF, Silverlight, Windows Forms. Um, even you even have an HTML5 version of that, which is basically you know you, you place the JavaScript files and reference those in your web application, and then you hook it up, and then you point to the report files that way. Um, that's basically what we have. So just wanted to show everyone that. So now the real purpose of this is to create some reports. So what I will do is right click on the project and and then select add a new item. So we're going to add a brand new item to this project. And within the Visual Studio Add New Item dialog, we have a bunch of things, but what we want to look for is Infragistics. And we expand this because Infragistics snuck this in during the installation of the reporting product. And then we click on Reporting. So it's under the Reporting filter. And we just select Infragistics Report. We have other stuff in here, which is for other purposes, but for this video, it's going to be all about adding and creating a brand new report. So let's call it customer list. I want a list of customers. Just like that customer list, we click on add. And now we have this report added to the project. And here it is, customer list.igr. We could open this up in an editor, which I'll do this in another video. You could see the next video that I have. And it just takes you through some of the H the um some of the XML elements just to explain um, some basics about it. So let's make a little bit of space here because I'm just trying to optimize this for video recording. And you may observe there's various um, elements that are on the screen right now. And this is a really nice um, drag and drop WYSIWYG way of creating the report. So to be clear about this, reports at this point in time are created and defined and configured within Visual Studio by developers and then once you're done with that you essentially deploy these reports and then they're used and viewed by your end users. Now I'm not going to go over all the complex functionalities such as um, you know we have, we have stuff like charts, we have parameterized UI that we can set up in the report so that way you can define SQL statements or classes that receive arguments that return data based on what the end user provides. You can set that up and have it as part of the user interface on your report, which is great. It's, it's built-in parameterized reporting. 
Um, but we'll just do a basic report. So just as an introduction to this WYSIWYG designer, here we have the ability to select different paper sizes as we see here. And it looks beautiful as well because Infragistics developers and engineers have created this so that it takes advantage of Visual Studio's WPF engine that we get here at design time. You could change the paper from landscape to portrait by clicking these buttons. So I just went to landscape and you want to switch back to portrait, you click on that. Then you could click on this button here to add a data source. Then we have different sections such as the page footer, which is on every page. Then there's like a report footer that is just at the end of the report. And then we have um, the page header section. We have the body. You could actually create groups. Like for example, I have a list of customers that I'm going to add here as a data reference. What if I wanted to group the customers by country? I can create a group and then use the country field as the grouping criteria where it makes a distinct list of country and then has subsections for that. Um, then the report header, this is basically like just one header that shows up at the beginning of the report. And then the page header repeats on every page. So let's have a little bit of fun. So let's first start off with some data sources. So I can click on this here and this is basically the report designer or the report data explorer that is part of this report WYSIWYG developer here, designer. So I could click here and add a new data source, or I could also click here, it doesn't matter. I'm going to point this directly to a SQL data source. I mean, you could also select an object data source if you have such in your such classes in your projects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a brand new connection. I'm going to look at my local machine, or you know, you could point it to whatever you know database server you have. And I'm going to select the Northwind database, the good old trusty Northwind database. Here it is, I just selected it. Let's make sure that the connection is up and running. Now we're good to go. I'm gonna leave this as SQL Data Source 1 just for now. Then we click Next. And I'm going to select the Customers table. Click Next. Test the query to make sure that it works. And we click Finish. Now I have a referenced item here. I could add as many data sources as I like. I could create you know, custom joins or whatever. Just whatever SQL statement because I'm working with a SQL data source. I could come up with whatever I want to return a set of data that has the schema that I created or you could have multiple individual ones because you can use these data sources for various objects that you can drop into the report. So real easy, let's create the customer list. So I'll just take customer ID, company name, contact name, and how about we'll take country. Well, let's just keep it simple because I'm making a video. Let's try to keep the real estate here simple. So I'll just choose these three fields. I will drag and drop it into the body section. And when I do that, let me just scr scrunch this down. I've now created a report with these fields and you can see it here. This is essentially a table construct and I could style this. So if I, let's say if I click on this top row, I can set properties for this such as, uh, let me see if I go to the font style, I could set font style like, um, you know, set it like normal or you know, italic or basically font stuff. Change the fonts here. Um, I could set like the background, background color, foreground color. Let's say if I wanted to um, set the background color to, let's come up with a weird color, let's say blue or something. We'll, we'll do that. And then we'll do like the four color or foreground. Let's make it white. Let me scroll down a little. So we'll make this like white or gray, so you can see that, just add some styling. And we'll leave it as that. Now, instead of compiling this and then setting up an application to view your report, Infragistics has also set up a preview button directly on the WYSIWYG designer, so it's very convenient. So I can just click on preview to see if it works. And if it works, it's right here in front of me. So this is what it looks like so far, so it's great. And if you actually check this out, this is an actual preview of our report viewer, which is what it looks like if you use the XAML version or the, the Windows Forms version. Um, the HTML5 version is a little different, but it still has pretty much the same functionality. And you could export it. You could see what it looks like as a PDF, XPS, or as an Excel document. Um, it's really great. So you know they really did a good job in setting it up so it's easy for you to create reports and view them on the fly. And notice how this could be a throwaway project 
just for the purpose of creating reports where you take the report files and copy them over while you actually have this throwaway project in like source control. And I could flip through the pages of the report. There's only there's only a couple of pages, so three, four, two, one, two, three, four, five. You know, just flipping through these pages just to show you. Then you can zoom in and out. So if I click on here, notice how my because my screen is so small, I get this little um, icon that shows me the other functionalities that I can't see. I could zoom in on it and then just scroll around. And this is what it looks like so far. Okay, so now we jump back to the designer and I want to show you something else. This, we could go to the Visual Studio Toolbox while we're on the report WYSIWYG designer and we'll get the Net Advantage reporting tools. Now these tools can only be used on the reporting surface, so that's why we don't see other tools such as like, you know, Windows Forms controls or any of those controls or components like data sources because we're clicked on and in the context of the report. So we could do something like a label, so if I drag and drop a label here, I can basically you know, set a title here, so I could call this customer list, so I could even click on this little element that shows up, and I'm able to edit this, so I could call this Northwind customer list. Now, let's take a look at this expression assistant, or this text editor, which is basically a complex expression assistant it helps you create expressions so rather than just a string you could basically put other variables in here such as math you know math formulas dates aggregate formulas string manipulation here we have others um, there's there's fields that you can place so for example I could um, you know drag and drop the customer ID in there and the syntax is something like this where um, it's basically just treat this as a string, like a, like a string as in Visual Studio with quotes and um, concatenation symbols like the plus sign, and then you basically do it that way. Okay, then let's see. Let's style this one up real quick. We'll make we'll make it a little bigger. Let's set this to like let's see what thirty four looks like. Maybe set it to 34, make it much bigger. Um, let's see. So one of the popular things that people like to do on a, any typical report is to add a page footer with some information. So I'm going to drag and drop a label control onto the report footer section. And let's just make this a little bit bigger. And let's click on this expression assistant launching button. And I'm going to delete the default label text and let's do this. So I'm going to show you how to basically work with string literals and um, expressions including variables that are available in here. So we could do something like this. So start it off. If you're going to do just plain old hard-coded text for your entire label, just type the text in and it will work. However, if you're going to mix and match um, expressions like or, or like literals or just use variables, parameters, or or anything like that we've seen here such as the formulas or aggregate functions start off with the equal sign and then important a space so equal sign space and then let's do this like here's a variable variable of the current page and then we'll concatenate the string and then we'll do this of and another plus so we're doing like the current page variable concatenating concatenated with of and we're going to concatenate this with the total pages. So let's find the total pages variable and we'll click on that and that's it. I just created an expression. Now, does it work? Let's find out. We're going to look at preview. Does it work? Uh, let's zoom in and find out. And it looks like it's evaluating correctly. So page 1 of 5 Two of five, three of five, four of five, five of five, and we're good to go. That's just like a quick and easy expression. Now keep in mind you could do stuff with um, fields. Like for example, I could add another column to this, and then use, you know, I could I could pretty much um, use the expressions and do stuff that way to create calculated stuff as well. So there's a bunch of things you can do with the expressions. So that's pretty much a real quick introduction on how to create the report and now that you have this report file here um, you can basically copy this um, place it wherever you like 
and make sure you watch the next video that I have here um, reusing reports so that you can see how this works now real quick I'll just do this while I'm uh, while I have this up and running I'm going to go and add the report viewer for Windows Forms so let's drag and drop the ultra report viewer now this is another way of kind of embedding the report that I created inside the actual assembly of the, co the compiled assembly of this thing so let me just set this doc to fill real quick doc is set to fill and I'm going to click on the smart tag and it's basically going to say well where's the definition URI so I could just click on this guy here and notice how it recognizes the report that I created now when I do this right this notation here essentially um, the way this is set up is basically embedded as an assembly resource so if I were to run this I'm actually running the application and hosting the report that I created in my Windows form with the Infragistics Windows Forms Report Viewer um, that's again embedding it in the assembly but again here it is I'm gonna drag it over it's running it's generating the report and here it is but again remember I could I could build this as a separate application and have a report viewer and you could do something like maybe populate a list or some kind of tree node structure with reports that may exist in a directory somewhere then your end users click on it and then you could assign the report viewer um, definition URI gets assigned to whatever the value is from the, the combo box or list or tree nodes that are populated with a bunch of reports so I hope you enjoyed this video and just make sure you go through the documentation learn about all the great features that exist in the NetAdvantage reporting product that can be viewed on many different platforms Infragistics on the web at infragistics.com.